Hello and a very warm welcome back to Maths Plus. We're continuing on the 2022 higher level leaving sort maths paper two. And we're on to question five, which is statistics. So let's start off now with the first part A, and we can see there that we have a random sample with 400 students. One three five of the students preferred remote learning, and we need to find first of all the proportion. Okay, so we just use the fraction. Part two, we have to get the margin of error. So we're using this formula here, one over the square root of n. And we need to work out the 95% confidence interval. And again, in part three, we're doing a confidence interval, but we're using a different formula with the proportion value, which is uh, in the log table. So let's start off. Right, so we want to work get the proportion so we could call that the proportional mean and we can go p hat just like that and we can go is equal to the sample number in favor which is x over um, the total number so it's going to be 135 over 400 and that will give a decimal output of 0.32 375 all right so that's the first part and we're going to use that a lot and that's the four decimal places all right so let's <clears throat> look at the margin of error confidence interval so first of all we need to put the margin of error formula together um, with the proportion so we're just going to write out our confidence interval is going to be the mean proportion plus or minus 1 over the square root of n okay we can write those as decimals um, and let's put it all together so we have p is already uh, got so that we're going to write in all our values here 135 over 400 plus or minus 1 over the square root of 400 and that will give us a output of 0 0.3375 plus or minus 0 0.05 now we need to um, put them in a, in a set of range values so we'll just um, subtract to 0 0.5 and we will get 0 0.2875 for the lower limit and when we plus it we will get 0 0.3875 all right so that's the first part and that's what it would look like on your normal distribution graph and 95 percent confidence interval all right so now we're going to do the uh, we have a similar objective but if we're using the other formula it's more accurate and we're using the value this formula in your log table so we're going to have the the standard deviation is going to be um, the square root of p but multiplied by 1 minus p all over uh, in inside the square root and let's put it all together now so we're going to go like this p plus or minus so now because that's a um, standard uh, deviation um, we have to multiply it by 1.96 which is the factor for the 95% confidence interval if it was 99% well the factor would be uh, 2.56 so it changes but in this case 1.96 applies so we're going to put in all the notation here 1 minus p hat all over n so let's substitute in our values and let's see how close we will get to the margin of error so again 135 over 400 plus or minus 1.96 
and that's substituting all our values and then we can use our calculator to compute it out so 135 over 400 multiplied by 1 minus 135 over 400 so pretty straightforward but you need to know which forms are relevant and also you need to know about the 1.96 and that's a variable so that's for the 95% CI and we're going to use the 1.96 alright so let's look at our interval so compute this and let's crunch all our numbers and we will get 0 0.2912 for our lower limit and then when we plus it we will get 0 0.3 838 to four decimal places so the um, the interval has narrowed and um, it's a little bit different it's a slight percentage difference but let's look at how they compare and you can see that there's 2875 for the lower limit over here and 2912 and again for the higher limit 3875 3838 so the the proportional confidence interval has shrunk very 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 uh, marginally all right so let's go on to the second part and we have to do a hypothesis proof so we're given the data um, with a sample so we'll have the mean the standard deviation and we'll have the sample mean and we'll have to test this against you know a new mean or a claim so we'll have the null hypothesis the confidence interval calculations and then we have to make our conclusion and also our reasoning behind the conclusion so let's start the hypothesis test and put it all together all right so the null hypothesis well what does null really mean statistically well, it means that there's no change from the mean. So we can write it like this. H O null hypothesis. And we can state that the monthly mobile spend has not changed. So there's no change in the amount up here in the description paragraph. So we can say the monthly monthly um, mobile spend has not changed and the alternative must be that it has changed so the monthly mobile spend has changed so let's put our values together so we have to use this formula now to get our z score which will give us a measure of how far we are from the mean okay so if we are more than 1.96 times this measure from the mean then we will be outside the confidence interval so let's put it all together so here is the formula it's going to be the sample mean x bar minus the mean okay our test value and then we have it all over the standard error okay the standard deviation over the square root of n. All right, so let's substitute in our values. So we're going to use 22.16 because that's our sample mean minus the proposed mean or the claim 20.79 to be our new monthly spend all over the standard deviation. So it's 8.12, which is the variance of the group and then all over the square root of n and as before the n value is the population or the sample size okay so if we, when we compute all of this out we're going to get a value to three decimal places here so we're going to get 3.773 all right so that's our z score so our conclusion will be um, to reject the null hypothesis reject the null hypothesis 
and the reason for it is um, well numerically well the result will be greater than our critical value of 1.96 for the 95% confidence interval 1.96 or we could also say that's related to the 5% level of significance all right so that's what we have as an output you can see the 3.77 is well outside the 1.96 and therefore we will reject the null So thank you for watching Maths Plus um, and thanks to all my subscribers. Keep an eye out for the next awesome video.